It's here. It's finally here. As I promised. Sorry for the wait, but it's here. This is my MF Doom worst to best. I'm going to be going through the discography of one of the most creative and enigmatic voices in hip hop's underground and ranking his whole discography from worst to best. Now, this can get kind of weird because over the years, MF Doom, aka Daniel Dumoulay, has only released a handful of records under the MF Doom name, at least True Blue Rap Records. He's released quite a few instrumental projects under the Special Herb series. He has one album simply under the name Doom, then he has some other records under a, a few pseudonyms. And some of the guy's most legendary projects have been collaborative efforts. In this video, I'm gonna do my best to take it all into account, with the exception of KMD, the rap trio where he essentially got his start, which saw a premature demise due to the passing of his brother, and getting dropped by their label at the time, Elektra Records. And this is by no means me telling you not to listen to these KMD records. Please do. They're great pieces of music. Uh, but uh, to me, it's such a vastly different moment in Doom's career that I don't really feel all that confident about ranking them amongst these albums. Nor am I going to include in the ranking projects where Doom uh, has found himself in more of a producer role than a rapper role. I'm pretty much starting with when Zevlov X returned in 1999, reinvented and villainous, and just kind of calling it from there. The rest is history. In my opinion, Doom's weakest record is his latest record, at least at the time of me shooting this video. This thing features production from Gennaro Jarrell, who before this album, I had not really heard of him, but uh, he seemed kind of like a beatsmith once I heard his production on this thing, who was really up Doom's alley with his penchant for odd grooves and really obscure samples. I'm not really saying I love all the instrumentals here or anything, but if there is one thing about these beats, they're not very stylistically consistent. The first five Five tracks on this thing feature an eclectic array of sounds. The song Governor features these off-kilter kicks and like these tinny strumming samples. It sounds more like a dreamscape than a rap beat. The song Rhyme and Slang is punchy and punctuated with a fuzzy synth bass line. Now being experimental and being unpredictable is not necessarily a bad thing, especially on a Doom album, but he just doesn't sound up to the challenge of rapping on these beats. Like on the song Banished, which is really warped, trippy, psychedelic, features this cycling groove, and Doom's very fast, overbearing flow just feels really awkward and out of place. It's a moment where he steps outside of his comfort zone and things just kind of go left. But then when he's resting on a more trademark flow, like on the song Boring Convo, uh, there's a severe lack of quotables and intensity and passion and character in his delivery. It's like watching a, a, a seasoned gymnast who's been completely out of practice for a decade and on a steady diet of quarter pounders just try to get up and do like a classic, a usual routine. And overall on this record, there's just too little doom presence with at least a handful of tracks on here uh, that feature little to no Doom vocals whatsoever. Dog Friendly, About the Shoes, Still Caps, Viberian Sun. Now this album is not without its highlights though. The health conscious and conspiratorial GMO is one of Doom's sharpest topical tracks in a long time. And also Jarrell's production fuses really well with Doom's flow on Winter Blues to elicit just a very steady head bobbing groove. And Retarded Friend is probably where Doom is at his most villainous on the entire record. He comes through with this monstrous aggression, talking about how he'll eat one rapper a day, like a Centrum. You know, it's not a terrible listen, it's just inconsistent, and Doom has clearly released better. Next in the list, it's Venomous Villain, the second album to be released under the Victor Vaughn name. This album dropped in 2004 and arrived in the midst of a very prolific period for Doom. Vaudeville Villain dropped in 2003, just months earlier was Mad Villainy, and just around the corner, you had the Danger Mouse album, you had um, Food. So it's kinda easy to see that in the midst of all of these legendary releases, uh, that Venomous Villain over here didn't really get the attention it deserved, not only for from fans, but Doom himself. Not only because there's kind of an overall lack of material on this thing, but also the cover. 
makes me think I'm about to listen to a knockoff of the artist who made Vaudeville Villain. Also, this thing was released on a label that I'm pretty sure is now defunct because now I just see some kind of like domain placeholder webpage when I look up the website. As far as the music on this thing goes, I think it's quality, but it doesn't really amount to much more than a series of vaudeville villain afterthoughts. I think the only thing keeping this album going is that it was recorded during a time when Doom's style was just relatively fresh. And even here on this somewhat lackluster project, his awareness of that is very clear in his voice. At this point in Doom's career, it's almost like he couldn't write a verse that didn't have at least a whiff of genius to it. The song Rap Game still remains one of my favorite Doom tracks of all time, and if you're looking to learn more about the Victor Vaughn character, you're gonna wanna look this project up because there's a bit of a spoken word interlude where Doom or Vic kind of explains the reasoning behind this persona, why he needs another persona in a very frank and funny way. There isn't a track on this thing that I dislike or that I hate or that I think is total trash. It's just that overall the album is really just kind of short and unambitious. It loses steam toward the end too. It's mostly for hardcore fans, but I think even casual listeners will get something out of it as Doom's persona and his creative lyrical references are both in full effect. Now, King Ghidra, Take Me to Your Leader, dropped in 2003. Not officially a part of the MF Doom timeline, if you can call it that, but an essential part of MF Doom's evolution post his debut, Operation Doomsday. Now, there are a lot of features on this thing, so it's not the most Doom-centric project. There are some tracks where he makes no lyrical appearances at all. Not to say the album is bad because of that though. Songs like I Wonder and Lockjaw are serious highlights for me on this thing. But what places Take Me to Your Leader at this point in the list is that it's an essential part of Doom's evolution and progress as an artist. Because on Take Me to Your Leader, he manages to start honing this huskier, darker, more villainous sound in his voice. His production gets a, a, a little more uh, cinematic. It's eerier, it's more colorful, it starts to evoke the vibe of like an old monster movie or something. Or you're listening to the soundtrack of an old-timey superhero movie at the moment where the villain reveals himself. Ideas and sounds that didn't sound quite as developed on Operation Doomsday. And while we may be just getting a mere glimpse of them here on this album, they still sound great, which makes the cell a significant moment in the Doom catalog. Next is The Mouse and the Mask, Doom's legendary collaboration with producer Danger Mouse. This thing dropped in 2005 and came after an incredibly prolific and artistically amazing period for Doom, with Vaudeville Villain and Mm Food and Mad Villainy all dropping within a year or two prior. Now, I personally do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this album. I love it more for its context than what it, it actually is. I sort of see The Mouse and the Mask as a bit of a victory lap for Doom. He had just dropped all of these dense, incredible, amazing creative records, and now he's doing something that's just a little bit more lighthearted and promotional and comedic. In affiliation with Adult Swim, Doom and Danger Mouse got together for a series of cartoony rap tracks centered around all of this late night animated Cartoon Network programming, occasionally rapping directly about characters or scenarios in shows like Aqua Teen Hunger Force, C-Lab 2021, Space Ghost Coast to Coast, Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law. At the time, it was really exciting. Personally for me, as an underground rap fan, as a huge Adult Swim fan. It was just so weird to have these two worlds colliding here because both of them were just in a golden age of creativity. And linking up brought both of them a lot of attention and legitimacy, especially Doom, whose hype on this thing was only amplified by the inclusion of Danger Mouse, who at the time was one of the industry's most in-demand producers, not only because at this point he had proven his salt with some excellent tracks on Gorilla's Demon Days album, but also because he was kind of a renegade in the industry at the time because of the heat and the attack Attention he caught off of his Grey album mashup record where he pulled together Beatles instrumentals with acapellas from Jay-Z's Black album. Still though, I think a lot of the production on this thing is really fresh, it's really diverse, it brings the cartoony sound and vibe that you would want on a record like this, while still staying true to some very jazzy and gritty hip-hop production fundamentals, especially on The Mask and Old School Rules. My one issue with this project though is that <laughs> It is super heavy-handed with the adult swim sketches, to the point where it's really disruptive, 
borderline annoying, and this is coming from someone who was a fan of this programming back in the day. Even though I owned most of these shows on DVD, uh, I feel like engraving them so deeply into this album's DNA just kind of makes it feel a little dated in retrospect, and if you don't believe me, give it five more years, please. I think some of the integrations are really creative and fun, uh, but a lot of them just wear thin for me as I get older. Still though, I do think Doom is in rare form on this album. He continues to bring the playful, frisky lyricism that made mmm food so great. I mean, on the opening lines of the song Sofa King, he talks about eating a rapper, spitting out his chain, and then immediately after makes a super deep Shakespeare reference with the Beast with Two Backs line. You know, there are a lot of good things about this album that, in my opinion, make it one of Doom's most accessible releases. Easygoing flows, articulate delivery, lots of fun, humorous, nerdy references. It really serves as a great introduction for anybody looking to dip their toes into a alternative, into abstract, into some modern underground hip-hop. It's odd and it's off the beaten path, but without sounding stuffy and alienating and too cool for your average person to listen to. Undeniably fun, great project. Nothing special. Nothing special. Operation Doomsday, 1999, Doom's debut album. Fans continually rank it as one of his best, best, best. I slightly disagree, though there are a lot of highlights on this thing and this album ranks relatively high on this list because of the historical significance in Doom's discography. It's so crazy to think of this thing coming out in 1999. I was just breaking into high school and from what I remember of the most popular hip hop around the time, like we had DMX, Eminem, Biggie and Pac were still getting tons of play, like Dr. Dre, ODB, Beastie Boys, a lot of Jay-Z, all of which were a far, far, far fetch from the rap underground that Doom seemed to be emerging from at the time. For some reason, Operation Doomsday had a super rough amateurish sound and performance quality to it, even though Doom was already a seasoned MC from his years in KMD. It's like in this characteristic reinvention, he was kind of starting all over again. And that's because in a way he kind of is with this total top-down renovation of his performance style, his persona, and anybody who is familiar with the output that came before Operation Doomsday and after Operation Doomsday can tell that Doom's evolution, his transition into this new character, this new persona, is not yet complete on this album. There are only a handful of songs amongst the 19 tracks here where Doom sounds even halfway as villainous as he would in five years down the road. His eclectic lyrical style, his trademark flow, and his very husky rasp do show up occasionally, but in a very diminished capacity. Not to completely discount Operation Doomsday, though, because this thing is loaded with very interesting, very smart jazz rap tracks. What Doom does not have in terms of grit on this album, he makes up for in some very youthful spunk. A lot of relentless flows, good production, solid features. It's still a very solid, very good project, especially the remastered version if you can get your hands on it. And in my opinion, a must listen for any Doom fan. <laughs> 2003, Vaudeville Villain, Victor Vaughn, the first album Doom released under the Victor Vaughn name, and released just months after Take Me to Your Leader, in this very short span of time. Uh, from what I can tell, uh, Doom seems to improve his talents by leaps and bounds, both in terms of vocal delivery, of lyrical ability. From the get-go on this thing, Doom is showing an impressive amount of skill and aggression. I mean, the title track here is probably one of the hardest openers of any Doom project yet. And while Vaudeville Villain is not one of the darkest and most villainous albums in Doom's discography, uh, it is one of the longest, most consistent, and most lyrically satisfying. And if there's anything else that separates this album from the rest of Doom's catalog, it's that there's still kind of like a, a youthful hunger, a fire in his belly that I still hear at this point in his career that isn't quite as intense on any other album, at least not while he's showcasing this level of skill. There's just an intensity to so many of the flows on this project, so many relentlessly dense verses on this thing, which is why, in my opinion, Vaudeville Villain truly is like the hip-hop head's doom record, because here, it's just no bells and whistles, it's all killer, it's no filler. Doom isn't quite 
emphasizing his character, his sense of humor, all of the weird bells and whistles gimmicks that he would later emphasize a bit more on subsequent projects. Some of which I think add a lot of character and drama and personality to Doom's albums. But again, if you're looking for just a hard, gritty, straightforward, no BS Doom album, uh, which again is part of what makes this record so great, so entertaining, so freaking flawless, then please do not miss out on this. It's excellent. Born Like This, released in 2009, Doom's project where he drops the MF for some reason, uh, one of his late era projects. Some of you might be wondering why it's landed so high on this list, but in this humble music reviewer's opinion, this thing is consistently underrated, even almost 10 years down the road. Unfortunately, time has not really increased this album's profile in the eyes of most fans. Which kind of leaves me confused, because given that Doom's persona is a villainous one, this album is everything that a villain truly should be. This is easily Doom's darkest and most apocalyptic album. The man's sense of humor is still intact, but it's nowhere near as cartoony and as lighthearted as previous releases. And you know what, I think there's something to be said about him simply wanting to be referred to as Doom on this project, because he sounds particularly monstrous on tracks like Gazillion Ear. His voice sounds noticeably deeper, it's like he's almost swallowing the microphone on this track. And when Doom is playing a joke and getting hilarious, he's just super vulgar about it, like on ball skin. And you cannot deny that the song with Raekwon on this thing is one of the grittiest cuts in Doom's entire discography. And he gets even darker on tracks like Cells and Supervillains. And there are a lot of vividly violent moments on this album too that range from grim, like on the song Absolutely, to kind of animated, like on Rap Ambush. There are some tracks on this thing that I think are a little rough around the edges, like uh, the song Angels with Tony Starks, uh, but I think in the end they work to the album's filth-coated benefit. This is also the case for Microwave Mayo, or the song That's That, which features one of the craziest flows of any Doom song of all time. Also this hilarious like moment where he's singing his brains out toward the end of the track. Still stands out after all these years as one of my favorite moments on any Doom album, and uh, at this moment, on the track, he kind of acknowledges his shadowy kind of character, his penchant for uh, appearing and then disappearing. I wouldn't say it's a perfect, perfect album. Uh, I do think the very homophobic Bati Boys uh, looks uglier as every year draws on, but the album is so potently dark, I just have a, a real addiction to it. I think the Jay Dilla production adds a lot to this project too, especially on Lightworks. I just love, love, love this album for its wicked, its shady style. And I just cross my fingers here and hope that it grows on Doom fans more and more uh, as the years go on. Mm Food dropped in 2004 out of all of the albums released under the MF Doom name, M Food is easily Doom's tightest and most consistent and most thematic album experience. It's an incredibly creative beginning to end series of food obsessed rap songs that work in all these double entendres, all this symbolism, and a fantastic sense of humor. And all of the production on this thing, with a few exceptions, is provided by the metal fingered villain himself. This thing is just back to back creative, eccentric beats loads of colorful, obscure samples. But maybe the most impressive thing about Mm Food is just at how many angles he's able to approach the whole food theme. Whether it be on pot holders, where essentially the, the refrain hot shit and sort of holding hot shit uh, is enough to sort of make that connection. Or the meditation on friendship with uh, Deep Fried Friends, which is actually one of the most thoughtful uh, and in a way emotionally moving songs Doom has ever penned. Beef rap, I mean, Kind of obvious there, you get it. The song Vomit Spit essentially is just Doom delivering endless bars upon endless bars. And on the song Cookies, I mean, you're getting all of these awesome, hilarious, deep cookie references. And Doom explores these themes, not just lyrically, but instrumentally too, uh, with just not only some of the samples that turn up in the beats, but with a weird sort of like little instrumental, like four part interlude that happens in the middle of the record. And there are moments on this album that run deeper than the food theme itself, like on the song Con Carney, which is essentially uh, a tribute to his brother. Great album. One of his easiest to get into as well. And I think the sort of food theme of the record makes it like a really universal, enjoyable piece of music too. Super well produced, super well put together, super well recorded and performed. I really just wish it was longer. 
number one, mad villainy, mad villain. You probably saw this coming, and that's totally understandable. I mean, this album being number one is, is obvious because it's just so freaking great. Doom's legendary collaborative record with the man, the myth, Mr. Madlib. What can I say here that I haven't said already in my full-length review of this album that we will link you to at the end of this video? Not, Not much. much. <laughs> it's just, it's just so great. It's just so amazing. It's still amazing after all these years. You know, it's just really Doom and Madlib both in rare form, both at peaks of creativity in their respective careers. Not only is Doom assembling these incredibly intricate and dense and hilarious and vivid verses that sound like they're just coming from another world, like this entire world, this entire like uh, a place that he's just invented entirely in his head where only the logic of his bars sort of makes sense, but you know, they sort of make sense to someone who's not in that world in his head, but it really makes you want to be in that world. It's so enticing, it's so descriptive, it's so intriguing, but also mad libs beats on this thing. Oh my god! Oh my god! His production is insane. You know, not only is it fantastic track for track for track, but I'm just blown away at the sonic palette, the diversity of this album. I mean, tracks like Accordion and Meat Grinder and Curls, like to imagine that these, just these three beats are all coming from the same musical mind is insanity. And not only that, but you know, sort of the weird linear uh, motif-like structuring of a lot of these tracks is just like really weird, really unexpected, very unorthodox, but somehow it all works because the album hits you with so much quality material, so many tracks on tracks on tracks on tracks. Track, 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 track. This thing is so abstract, it's loose, it's shadowy, it's beautiful, it's inventive. I'm just, I'm just talking and ranting about it, and it just really makes me want to listen to it. So I think I'm, um, I think I'm gonna go try, go try to make an effort to do that right now, because I'd just rather be listening to this album than talking about it. All right, you know it's number one. I know it's number one. You know why. I know why. I'm not gonna bullshit you about it anymore. That's the list. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys hopefully in the next best uh, to worst, worst to best list video uh, that um, I, I don't want it to take too long to do, but no promises, no promises. I'm very bad at doing these in a timely fashion. Transition. Uh, what did you think of this list? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you expect it? Did you predict it? Did you uh, get totally surprised by it? Let me know. And here's my review of Mad Villainy right next to my head over here that you should watch and check out. Also, you can subscribe to the channel if you want to do that. And I will catch you guys in another video very soon. Forever.